Welcome to the podcast, Life After Addiction and Indictment. I'm your host, Steve Cloward, and I spent most of the last decade and well over $100,000 on coaches, consultants, masterminds, and events trying to figure out how to reclaim my life again. On this podcast, I'm going to share the tools, the tips, the tricks, and the hacks that allowed me to forgive myself so that I could reclaim my life again. I'll be interviewing experts in mindset, leadership, entrepreneurship, sales, marketing, branding, and so much more. I'm glad you're here. Sit back and relax and enjoy the show. Let's go. This is Life After Addiction and Indictment. Hey, welcome to Life After Addiction and Indictment. Today, I've got a gentleman with me who's, you know, we have just recently met and we've had a conversation here for several minutes and man, <laughs> I just feel like he's you know, way a long lost brother. So I'm really so excited to uh, get into this, uh, tell his story. He's got a lot of great uh, information from the things that he's experienced throughout his life that I really think will help you regardless of where you're at in your life. So today I want to welcome Nico Lagan to the show. How are you doing, Nico? I'm great, man. We, uh, we've we been having a cool conversation prior to recording. We're, <laughs> we're going to have to continue at that one point. Yeah, in fact, just making sure we were recording. <laughs> <laughs> no, you are, you are. Yeah, no, cool. you are. Yeah, no, you are, you are. Yeah. So, you know, Nico is an influential entrepreneur. Um, he's a coach, author, host of the thought provoking contest, the Nico Lagan show. And he's got more than hundred K followers and content. And, and he's got um, a, I just lost my place where it was, but I, I really loved your five virtues of a good man. So I'm excited mm-hmm. to really kind of get into that. Cause I think we've really lost our way and yep. uh, we need that male figure in society in a big way. And it uh, seems like the alpha male is gone. For the most part, as far as I mean, it's, I don't think it's gone because I know you're one. I'm one, <laughs> but but you know, there's anyway. There's just been some things that have taken place to really, I think, suppress that type of person that we do need in society. So uh, let's start out. Uh, tell us a little bit about how you grew up, Nico, and then kind of you know what took place, how you ended up getting involved with drugs and things, and and we'll go from there. How's that sound? Sounds good to me. You know, it's interesting because I'm I'm writing my second book right now, and it's on the five virtues of a good man. Oh, awesome. And so I'm digging deep, right? I'm going back to all those years when this whole chat, like this whole path that I'm on right now started. And that's, man, 27 years ago. And it's interesting how when I was 14, my dad left, my, my parents got divorced, my dad left. And afterwards, I I saw him a handful of time. By the time he died, I think I was 29. By the time he died, it'd been 15 years since they were separated. And I think I can count on one hand the amount of time that I saw him. It it had been almost 10 years since I've seen him when he died. And it's interesting how him leaving has not only changed my teenage years, but it became my purpose later on in life. Like now, this is all I do. This is all I talk about. And as much as I wish I would have had a father figure when I was younger to guide me so that I didn't drop out of school when I was 15 years old, that I didn't become an addict, I didn't sell drugs, I didn't, you know, I was an asshole. I was a bad person. Let's call a spade a spade. At that yeah. age, between 14 to 21, I didn't have any guidance. My mother did her best, but she did not have the discipline or she wasn't the person to put me back in my place. Right. right. And when you start looking at all the, that we're men, we need to be guided. We always, I don't care how old you are. You're always going to be looking for somebody to mold yourself out after. And at 14 years of age, what did I know what a good man was? Right. So I, I emulated, I love rap. So I, I emulated the the rappers back then. And they were the, they they weren't the pussies we see today. (laughs) We're talking, we're talking about gangsters like the Wu-Tang Clan, the Tupac, the Mob Deep, the guys that grew up in ghettos with nothing, and now they're worth millions of dollars. They're partying all the time. They have nice cars. They have women all over the place. And I'm 14, 15, 16 years old. I'm like, man, really this well. is <laughs> this is what I want, right? So I, sh- I would have needed somebody to smack me in the back of the head and say, uh, you know what? This is bullshit. This is, those are not good people here. We're, we're talking about people that have done a lot of bad things in order to get there. But what did I know? I was 14 years old, and I was left on my own demise. So I spend this for man, six, seven years. And it's interesting because when I hit it's between 20 and 21, I'm getting too old to remember the exact date here, but the, 
you know, I don't believe in coincidences. I don't, I, everything happens for a reason. The only reason people think it's a coincidence is because they're not self-aware enough to understand what's actually happening and looking at it for what it is. Yeah. And I received, a, I was in a situation literally where all my, I was getting evicted of my apartment. I was sitting on the ground and all my, all my stuff is in boxes and I don't have anywhere to go, but I had a great opportunity where one of the guys that I've known for years that used to supply me with drugs is giving me an opportunity to not just sell it anymore, but to really start producing it. Like somebody from that he knew would show me the trade so that one day I could Your own produce those drugs. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, wow. you know, I, I don't know if you've ever seen this, but I've seen football fields of wheat plants. We're not talking a couple of pounds here. We're talking about mm -hmm. you show up and there's 20, 30, 40 uh, plastic bag full of weed that needs to be dried, that needs to be trimmed. And when you're 20 years old and you're, you've been dabbling and you've been just selling a bit, drugs here and there just to support your habit, you see this as a massive opportunity, right? Oh, so I'm yeah. sitting there getting evicted from my apartment. I have an opportunity that I could go deeper into the rabbit hole and just keep on going deeper and deeper and deeper into the wrong side of the law, let's say. Yeah. Simple phone call from my mother asking me if I'm happy. Wow. That's it. That It was really That's that simple. Fine. And she's like, are you happy? If you're not. Such a powerful I can't... question if you really you know, hear it. <laughs> Take well, it the in. thing, you know, this is what I've come to understand with life is pain and suffering are the greatest of teachers. If right. you're, nobody changes because every, because they feel good. That's right. You, you only make really, you only make true change, like change that will be changing your life from that moment on. If you're hurting enough that the way you've been going is no longer a possibility because if you know your definition, the definition of insanity is repeating the same thing over, over, over again, expecting different results. If you don't hurt enough, you're not going to want to change. You're not good. You're just, Oh, comfort zone is comfortable. Right. But when it's That's not so going true well, related to addiction and alcoholism, you know, uh, of course, pain and wreckage and uh -huh. damage and hell is enough. You know, hundred percent. But what's the first step in any addiction recovery program? The first step is always the same. I don't care where it is in the world. The first step is always the same. Admit that there is a problem, but admitting that there's a problem is not enough. Admitting that you're the fucking problem exactly. is what it comes down to. <laughs> you are the problem. If yeah. your life sucks, it's your fucking fault. This is always the first 100%. step. And that was my realization. When my mother asked me a question as simple as, are you happy? Jeez. You just, I, I'm just sitting there and what am I supposed to answer to this question? Because happiness is not something that, that can ever be achieved. It's temporary. It's right. a state of mind. It is not a place. It is just the way you feel at that exact moment. But can you really know what happiness is if you're never unhappy? That's why the yin yang, if you look, yeah. we're talking about Buddhism yeah. and Buddhism is all about the middle way, yeah. understanding that true life sits somewhere between happiness and unhappiness. And yeah, that, that realization right now, just a simple question. It's, it's always the simple questions that are so impactful say, when they're asked at the right, because there, there's nothing to understand. Are you happy? Yeah. There, there's three words. Are yeah. you happy? And <laughs> you're just nobody has an answer for that. But if you're if you're in a perfect state of mind for that question to have an impact, you're just existential crisis right there. You're hold on. I don't have an answer for you. I, I really don't know. And how can you truthfully get an answer to that question if you cannot assess what you are at that exact moment? Because happiness, like it or not, is based on how you feel about yourself. Bingo. If you feel like shit, you're not going to be happy. This is, there's no way around it. And when you start looking, really facing yourself, looking into the abyss of your, uh, of, of 
you're of you just look at yourself in the mirror for what you are you start to see that you're kind of an asshole you start yeah. to see that you you're a selfish person that you know what your drug habits have been hurting a lot of people around you because you were stealing you were using you didn't care about anybody else than yourself you didn't care about the consequences of your actions you didn't care that people couldn't rely on you that you weren't dependable all that mattered to you was your <laughs> your comfort you yeah. all that mattered to you is you and you know men are meant to serve men are meant to take care of others we're meant to protect others but if you're always selfish, there's no way you can become a good man. Because if you understand that serving is your first role on this planet, leading, and then you can only lead through serving. But if serving is your main goal, being selfish makes it impossible. And the only thing that can change is you. You know, we, we think that, we think that uh, men are depressed. Men are not depressed. They lack like purpose. Yeah. Bingo. That, that, I don't believe in depression. Depression to me is, is such a cop out. It's just, oh, I'm depressed. No, no. I, I can tell you right now, right now, you're probably treating your body like a dumpster. So you feel like shit. Guess what? Makes sense, right? Yeah. If you have no attachment or no love for, how can you ever be happy if you don't love yourself first? If, you're, if you treat yourself like garbage, guess what? You don't fucking love yourself. Yeah. So those are all things that, right? All at the same time, it's kind of like a smack in the back of the head. And you're just like, holy fuck, I'm an asshole. Oh, man, I'm not a nice person. Holy <laughs> shit, I've done a lot of stupid things just to support my habits. And, you know, it, it was like in the movies, you're faced with a cross, like you're at a crossroad. You, I can go one way, continue being a victim, continue not caring about others or I can simply overhaul everything, do a 180 and say, you know what, from now on, I'm going to own it. And that same day I moved to my mom's place. Like wow. that same, that same day I moved, I overnight, I stopped smoking. I stopped smoking. I used to smoke cigarettes. I stopped smoking cigarettes. I stopped taking drugs. I've stopped drinking. I cut off every single of my friends that I had until that point. I moved to a completely different city where my mother was located. And I completely isolated myself from everything that was my old life. Anything that was part of my life mm -hmm. until that day, got a big bar crossed, just, just crossed it off. And I said, you know what, where do we go from now? That's powerful, man. Jeez. And like you say, no, no coincidence. I mean, the timing of that call, I mean, this is crazy, you know? It's every 10 years. I've looked because I, I write, I, I'm writing my second book in a year. So I've, I've had a lot of time to reflect and yeah. it's every 10 years. It seems that every 10 years, there's something that forces me. There's an event. They're just like a smack in the back of the head. And I'm like, Oh boy. Okay. I think that um, I'm ready for the next step. Like I'm ready for something else. What comes next? Cause my last one was a year ago and it's always interesting how the day that you open that door, the day that you decide to not be a victim anymore, to hold yourself accountable, you start being honest with yourself. Yeah. You, you know, my five virtues of a good man, the first virtue is being courageous. Yeah. And I was just writing a couple of days ago that courage is honesty. You need, in order for you to be honest with yourself, you need courage and vice versa. 100%. Yeah. Having courage is being honest, is really having the power to look at something for what it is and not how we feel about it. And if you, you know, for the longest time, I, I, I've been on so many podcasts and I've spoken to so many people and I've always been asked the same question. What do you think is the biggest problem in today's society? Uh -huh. And for years, I thought that it was the last, the lack of masculine men. But over the past year, I've been traveling the U.S. in an RV with my girlfriend. And I'm running my, like I left my corporate job. I'm running my, my own business. So I have a lot of time by myself where I'm just trying to build something. Yeah. And because I create so much content now, I'm, 
always faced with those questions. And over the past year, I realized that the lack of masculinity is not the problem. It's a symptom of the root problem. And the root problem is so simple. And look at whatever problem you want. I can boil it down to the same thing. Accountability. There's somebody somewhere that is not doing its job. That's it. It's really all our problems we have today. Name it. Somebody somewhere is not doing their fucking job. Somebody doesn't want to be held accountable for their actions. That's that's what it is. Tired of paying exorbitant monthly fees for your in-home entertainment? Do you wish there was a way to bring quality and affordable entertainment right into your household without a monthly subscription? Well, look no further. Introducing the VC Box Android TV Stream Box. Since 2020, VC Box has been enriching people's lives all over the world, and now it's coming to North America. Say goodbye to scattered subscriptions and countless apps. We've got all your streaming in one place. This is the best fully loaded Android TV box provider in North America. Our user-friendly interface makes navigation a breeze, and with the voice remote featuring Google Assistant, finding your entertainment has never been easier. The VC Box V2 Pro Android Box is the epitome of convenience. Sit back, relax, and enjoy your favorite shows and movies with just a few simple voice commands. And the best part, no monthly subscriptions. That's right, you heard it correctly. Say goodbye to those pesky recurring fees and hello to endless entertainment. Join the VC Box revolution and elevate your entertainment experience. Don't miss out on this amazing opportunity. Visit our website and order your VC Box now. Bring home the VC Box today and bring endless joy and excitement to your household. VC Box, unleash the power of entertainment. Interesting that we don't talk about this. Like we mm -hmm. never, you have to be an addict in order to realize that, but we only apply it to our lives. Because when you're an addict, you, you have to, you know, in order to, in order to become selfless, you need to first become selfish. Yep. It, it's the same thing, you know, in the airplanes, they always, they always tell you to put your mask on before somebody that you take care of. Why? Because yeah. if you don't take care of yourself first, you're going to die trying to take mm -hmm. care of somebody else. So yeah. you're not helping anybody. So you need to be selfish before you can become selfless. And all those addiction programs will teach you that unknowingly that's what they, most people don't realize it and yeah. when i went through the aa and dna i i didn't know that nobody there's nobody in those classes that makes philosophy out of their principles right. to tell you okay this is what we're doing right now because right now all you're trying is to survive yeah. i'm just going to give you enough tools that you can apply in your life right now so that you understand what you need to do but nobody goes back afterwards to guys that's been clean for two years and say, hey, bro, you ever notice that what I was teaching you about accountability applies to every single portions of your life and not just your addiction? That every situation in life will change if you start owning your own shit. Yeah. But we don't teach that. It's not something we teach in society today. Yet, imagine if everybody was accountable for their bullshit. Oh, gosh change things overnight uh, the the world would be as close as possible to utopia exactly yeah utopia will never exist like don't get me wrong here but it would be man can you imagine if people still made mistake but were honest enough to say you know what i fucked up i messed yeah. up on that one i really messed up and you know what i'll take that one on the chin or you know courage we, we imagine courage comes from being fearless when courage is if you're fear show me somebody that says they're fearless i'll point you a liar there's no such thing as fearlessness if you are truly fearless you yeah. have a psychological problem yeah there's there's a part of your brain that is not operating yeah. the way it should operate but if you look at firefighters you look at policemen you look at guys that are in the army they're not doing what they do because they're not scared it's really they are doing, they are taking action in spite of fear. Yeah. And this is, again, this is why courage is the foundation of a good man. Without courage, you will never be able to achieve anything. You'll never be able to be dependable. 
Yeah. You, nobody can count on you if you're not courageous. That means that whatever happens, I'm not sure if you're going to choke. I don't know if you're going to do what you say you do because I'm not, I'm not sure you have the courage to do what you're supposed to be doing. So for the people out there that imagine that courage is something that's attached to saving others from a burning building, realize that being courageous just means standing up for your belief in the face of oppression. And what would be more useful today? No doubt. Like, imagine that not only men out there would be accountable for their bullshit, but they would actually stand up for what they believe in. They would actually say, you know what? No, no, this what's going on right now is not okay. I will not stand by it. Why? Because I live my life on a set of virtues and virtues are not traits or skills. Virtues are morality. They are the foundation of a man's belief. He will live his life by those foundations and every single decision he'll ever take will be based on morality. And unfortunately, we're not teaching this to our young men anymore. This is why I'm writing a book that's going to be extremely easy to follow. 100 page, 120 page tops for the people that don't read so that it's an easy read. I'll, I'll have somebody make a great narration for it. But it's just going to be Here's my story. How am I discovered this? And what are the exercises you need to put in place in order to achieve this too? That's all. I mean, we need way more books like that, you know? Simple, easy, Simple. straight yeah. to the point, no bullshit. I wanted to write like a 300, 400 page book. I'm 35,000 35, words in and a couple of weeks ago, I'm just like, you know what? No, we're going to chop that off to a hundred page, make it easy. And I'm going to try to target single mothers. Oh, that's cool. This is wow. one of the two groups I'm going to try to to target is really single mothers and fatherless men, obviously. Obviously. Yeah, both of those are yeah, great areas. Yeah. Areas it's needed. If you consider that 33% to four, depending on the study, you, you look at 33 to 40% of young boys now, of boys are growing up without their biological father in the house. Wow. So let's say that it's 33. We'll use the lower number of the studies out there. That means one out of three boys does not have a biological dad in his house wow. is being raised by a single mother. Do you, can you, can a mother teach a son how to become a man? No, she's not a chance. She, she's not a man. Oh, no, she's not. A, yeah, exactly. In the same way as a father can teach a daughter how to become a, a, a woman. Right. It takes a woman to teach her, but it's unfortunate because I talk about this all the time and it seems like it's always infuriates women as in, if I say this, it's like, I'm taking away, I, I, I'm diminishing the role of a mother yet. Yeah. It's totally acceptable to diminish men everywhere. Like yeah. look, just look at fucking television nowadays. Right. Every man out there has what my buddy called the Homer Simpson syndrome. Every man depicted in movies and in series now, they're all idiots. They're yeah. all guys are, well, duh. I sit down, they're obese, they're fat, they drink alcohol, and they're numb in the brain. Like, they really are just a bunch of idiots. Yeah. <laughs> it's, wow. yeah, that's sorry, great. I went on a rent there. No, no, that's, I think that's great information. I think that stuff needs to be talked about more because, you know, like you say, we need that courage to speak truth, you know? Yeah. And otherwise, how do you think we got to where we're at? You know, because we nobody became politically incorrect to speak up, speak your truth, you know. But yeah. we let it happen. You know, exactly. I take I take ownership of this. If Amen. people ask me all the time, how did this happen? Because of me, because of you. Yep. It's because good men out there did not want to deal with it. Great. We had other things to do. Yep. We have our families to take care of. We have our work. We have whatever's going on in our life. We're busy. Yep. And we decided that, you know what? They're acting like children. It's going to pass. But as the saying says, the only thing for evil to win is for good men to do nothing. To do nothing yep. And this is what we did. It's 100% on the back of good men what happened. Yep. And that's why I do what I do. That's why I quit a very well-paying corporate job that I was very good at. Yeah. And I actually kissed a, the best opportunity of my corporate career goodbye. Instead, 
I did what I'm I, I'm doing what I'm doing right now. But you know, that's what it takes. I did it because I felt responsible for what's happening. I'm taking it on the chin and to say, you know what, it's my fault. I could have done more. And I'll just be held accountable for what's going on right now. What can I do? Yeah. Try to spread the that's, word. Yeah. I think that's what more of us need to do is, you know, like you say, follow that passion and, and uh, it's easy to, you know, not necessarily easy is not the right word, but it's easy to be comfortable with the great paying job and the mm -hmm. lifestyle. Oh yeah. Again, how fulfilled are you? How happy are you? You know what I mean? Even though it's, it's not the things like we've talked about earlier, you mentioned is what makes us happy, but you know, as you referenced depression, you cannot yep. be depressed if you were focused on other people and serving other people. It's, it's damn near impossible. I think it is impossible. I've never been able to do it. That's when I feel, you know, the most fulfilled over any amount of money I've ever made is when you're truly serving someone and you see the impact for good that it has on them. It's, you know, th this is, I think is a misconception. So, I'll talk about how men are supposed to lead. Men are born leaders. And as soon as you hear leaders, you're talking about a, a general in the army or a president. But this is not what we... Yes, they're leaders. Absolutely. You can have leaders of millions of people. Yeah. But this is not where change is made. Change is made on the family level. Change is, men, or is made on the individual level. Change is made... On the community level, you know the expression that a man is like the world has changed one man at a time, but yeah. it takes just one man to change the world. This is how right. th this is what we're not preaching anymore either. To say that if you, you know, if you look at if you look at politics, there's two ways political systems are going to work. You have a bottom down and a top up type of situation. Right now, if you look at the way it is. Governments are so powerful, they're so big, they're so involved in everything that in or all they have to do to change a society is by forcing people to do it with giving them consequences if they don't. Yeah. You have to respect my pronouns or else you're going to go to jail. Guess what's going to happen? Over time, you're going to be able to change it and change it and change it and change it. At least some people are going to change. Yeah. I'll never change. They can all go fuck themselves. But yeah. all to say that you can force people with negative consequences, which is super fast. Why do you think communism is so powerful? Yeah, why do you think that take place the last few years? But why do you think communism is so powerful? Because you're basically centralizing the power of a whole society within a few fingers, within a few hands. So very easy to take massive decisions when you have a massive hammer that can, that, that can literally destroy everything you hit. Yeah. But then on the other side, you have a more classical liberal or conservative approach or a more traditional approach where look at the Stoics. You change the individual because society is made up of individual. And if you understand what a society is, it is a simple, is as society is just people that decided to live with each other under the same rule. Under We're going to agree that this is our system of law and that is what a society is. But you can have all the laws in place that you want, but if the person, if the, the individual themselves don't have any morality they have no virtue they don't stand for anything yeah. you have the result that we're seeing today but this is unfortunately the result of forcing people to change with negative consequences instead of changing the individual with positive result if you become better you can take care of your family if you become better you can be a leader in your community you can inspire others to follow you or to do what you're doing because they see the good that you're doing unfortunately when you change the individual it's a long-term process yeah forcing people into submission is very fast because here are weapons that we can use and weapons. I'm not just talking about guns here. I'm talking about indoctrination. I'm talking about using the system of law in order to force people to change. This is fast. You can do this 
You can you can declare a state of emergency tomorrow and force everybody to do something. Yeah. But if you change the individual, yes, you create people that can be depended on. You create good men that will maintain your society, that will defend it, that will continue building it and creating better, better, and better societies because they want to take care of their families. But unfortunately, this takes time. Yeah, certainly. A lot of time. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, because it took a long time to get where we're at, but it, it happened. And so, it doesn't take long to destroy it, unfortunately. Right. It, it's very fast to destroy. It takes forever to build, but extremely fast to destroy. Yeah, absolutely. So as you've started out, um, what you're doing now, your own business stuff, had you in the past that you had your own businesses um or you what what was your career like i was a sales engineer for a telecommunication company one of the biggest companies in canada i basically what i did is i we approached corporate companies we approached governments and when they needed to have information transported from one side to the other their side to the internet I was the one to develop the technical solution that would that we could sell to them. So all I did is I was in front of customers basically day in, day out, speaking to customers about what their needs are. And then I would develop with my my engineers in the back end, I would develop solutions that would be suitable for their needs. And I would sell it back to them afterwards. Oh, that's cool. So as you started on your personal journey that got you to start doing what you're doing, um, was there an event or a situation that triggered you to decide? Yeah, yeah co COVID, direction. COVID okay. in Canada, COVID changed everything for me. I was, um, you know, I, I had, I've, I was in the corporate world since ever I went back to school. I went back to school at the beginning of my twenties. A couple of years later, I started working in the corporate world and throughout the years, I, I went up and up and up and up through uh through the scale and i was working for this company back in 2020 where where i'm from like i'm in the u.s now but back then three years ago i was still in canada and canada had massive restrictions oh, big time. like march oh. 2020 like we and the province i'm from the french part of of canada and we had the hardest Set that our restrictions were the harshest one in the world. Like it was absolutely crazy. Yeah. And because I'm not vaccinated and I refuse to get vaccinated when 90, it's above 90% of Canadians are, are vaccinated oh, right now. Jeez. And my girlfriend and I are basically the two, the only two and both are respected family that are not vaccinated. But all to say that, I was living in the city. I was living in Montreal because all my customers were there. I had so many face-to-face -face meeting that I needed to be close to them. And in March, 2020, they basically, the government announced that we couldn't meet people face-to-face, -face, that you needed to be, stay in your bubble. Yeah. And Jeez. that put me in a situation where I'm like, okay, I have a, I have a place in the city. I also had, I had bought a property in the middle of nowhere a few years back, like, this might sound crazy to a lot of people, I would say to probably everybody I've ever told the story to, but I've always been, I've always had great instincts. Like I've always listened to my inner voice. I, I never doubt it. It's, I, I'm such a faithful person when it comes to this. If something's telling me to do, if God's telling me to do something, I don't fucking question yeah, it. I just, you know what? Yes, sir. Let's do it. I don't question. And for some reason, something was telling me to buy a property in the middle of nowhere and I've never been the best with my money. So in my head, I'm like, you know what? That makes sense. I'll invest money, I'll buy the house. It'll, it'll appreciate by itself. I'll rent it on Airbnb and no problem. And mm. I had been renting it. I, I had done a small reno on it. It was great. Like log house, middle of the woods, top of a mountain, overlooking valleys and lake. That's basically where I was, where, where the house was. So back in 2020, I'm like, you know what? I'll get rid of my place in the city and I'll just go live by myself in the middle of nowhere. And that's what I did. I, I ended up moving to the middle of nowhere with my German shepherd back then. And I stayed there for two and a half years. Wow. And basically the last just under four years, I haven't been living a regular life. I 
I stayed two and a half years over there. And now for the past year, I've been on the road. But the first year and a half, I was alone. I, I was in the wilderness, as you will. And yeah. I did a lot of self-reflection. I say that the serenity and the, yeah, it's just a different world the when you're out like that. The boredom the lack yeah. of distraction. Yeah. You know, you look you look at the Bible, you look at the story of Buddha, they both spend 40 days and 40 nights in the wilderness by themselves. Like it's interesting that they have both that yeah. as part of the of the religion itself, but it is a game changer to be to be able or to force yourself to go in a situation where you're alone. And as an extrovert, that was the thing that scared me the most. I'll bet, yeah. Is to, oh, that was one of the scariest decisions I've ever taken. And, but it changed me because, you know what? It didn't take long. Uh, a, f a, a couple of months after I, I was alone, I took a sabbatical from work. Like I, I took like three or four months off because I was still working remotely. Yeah. I had, I was one of the beta tester for Starlink. So funny enough, I had there, a better yeah. connection where I was there because <laughs> I was basically the only one compared to the one I had in the city. But all to say that I took, I took, yeah, about four months off. And the first three weeks, I, I had just, one of my dreams was to get a motorcycle. I've always wanted one. And uh -huh. When I first moved there, I started doing my courses and blah, blah, blah. It takes months and months and months in Canada. But I took a sabbatical when I got a week prior for me of me getting my licenses. I actually took a sabbatical. I got my licenses on a Monday. On a Wednesday, I was picking up my first bike. And 10 days after that, I left with 100 pounds of gear on my motorcycle. I literally was riding for maybe two, a bit more than two weeks. And I left, I just said, you know what, I'll take three, four weeks off. I'll just ride. And I ended up riding thousands and thousands of miles, meeting awesome people. I did not know where I was going. I was just, those are the things that looks cool. And let's see where I end up. I'll ride as far as, far as I want or as less as I feel that day. I'll just, if I feel like staying somewhere for five days, I'll just do that. If not, I'll be out. But it's interesting because I did that and now I've been doing it for a year, for 13 months. We've been through 23 states over the past 13 months. We never know really where we're going. We're yeah. just, we're, we're, we've done, I think this is our 20, 20th. Yeah, I think it's our 20th RV park that we've done over the past 13 months. We go and we've been from Maine, which is how we got into Canada. Uh, from Canada all the way down to San Diego. Mm -hmm. I I was in Seattle as, at a men conference, and my girlfriend ended up going to see her friend in Florida. So between the two of us, we've been to all the four corners. Oh, I think we've cool. ridden ten above ten thousand miles in the past year, hauling at eleven town eleven thousand pound monster behind us. Wow! But but I bet it's so yeah. It's to me there's. The freedom, but still being able to have an impact and do what you're wanting to do is just so powerful. You know, it, you know, I don't chase money. At exactly. the end of the at the end of the day, Not I made, <laughs> I could have made so much more money doing what I was doing prior. Yeah, and now I'm just all that matters to me is that we make enough money to be comfortable for me to be able to spend like I did this morning. I've been up since like two 30 in the morning. Uh -huh. I've, I've wrote in my new book for three, four hours. Then I sat outside. I, I created some content for today. Then I went outside with a cigar, was reading a book. Now I'm doing the podcast. I'll hit the gym and it's Friday. So I'll probably, I, I'm going to have a cheat meal afterwards, yeah. but th this is the thing, right? I, I can set up my, my schedule all I want. I think you're my eight podcast in the past four days. Wow. And I can really concentrate on doing what I want to do, what matters to me. And if you could tell me today that here's $20 million, I would still be doing exactly what I'm doing right now. I would upgrade probably. I would probably spend more money on the RV that I bought. I would probably upgrade the truck. I'd get a nicer motorcycle. But outside of that, my mission would be the exact same. I'd have a bigger team. I'd have more than two guys in my team. I'd probably have a team of yeah. 10 or 20. And you'd see me on million 
people podcast tomorrow because I could buy my way in. But the mission would not change at all. This is this is what I hope to be able to teach men. Like not only what it takes to be a good man, but once you're a good man, how do you go after your life purpose? How do you how do you get there? Yeah. Yeah. I, I know. Man. I was talking to a guy, so I I do a lot of street interviews, right? And over the past year, I've become more and more spiritual. Like the more time I spend exploring people, the more my spirituality is just over the past 12 years that I've discovered Buddhism, because this is where my spirituality started. It, it's incredible the journey that I've been through over the past 12 years. But ever since I moved by myself back in 2020, it just accelerated everything. And the past year, just going through and just meeting people upon people upon people, it has such a massive impact that now I I started doing, I like street interviews. I like to go talk to people in the street. And yeah. I was in Nashville last weekend and I was asking people if they believed in, if they believe in God. And I posted one of the videos yesterday and I got a comment today. The, the guy is like... Um, you know, faith is bullshit. Faith is uh, is being gullible. So I'm like, you know what? Okay, I I, I get five to ten million views on my content every month. So I'm used to I'm used to tr to oh, trolls. Ah, oh, a third, at least a third of the comments I get are not are not good. But I start talking to the guy. I'm like, okay, so let's say that you're right. I'll I'll bite. I'll bite. So how do you how do you create how do you first believe in yourself if you don't first have faith that you can accomplish whatever you're cap whatever you put your mind of how can you ever start a new relationship with someone if you don't first have faith that they are the person they say they are how can you ever discover your purpose if you don't first have faith that you were put on this earth for a reason and his answer is god's bullshit i'm like Okay. I don't know, but there's no point. You know, the Dalai Lama said, don't, don't, don't argue with idiots. Right. Just simply tell them that they're right and yeah. move along. It, it's never, never worth it. But, yeah. you know, it's interesting that we're down to that now. Isn't it though? It's crazy. Yeah. Because as you were saying, and you probably have a great story when it comes to that, because you were a Mormon. Uh, a Mormon. So yeah. uh, let's call a spade a spade. You were part of a sect. Because yeah, uh, cool. if you look at, it, but but that's my point. If you look at a lot of Christianity, they could they would be considered sex, yeah, or cult sex. Like with my accent, sounds like I'm talking about sex. porn here, <laughs> but that's not what I'm saying at all. But I'm I'm a Christian. Don't get me wrong. I'm a Christian, but I'm an yeah. original Christian. Like I'm a Gnostic Christian. Yeah. But if you look at you, at your background. I understand why people have a mistrust of religion. I get it. I get it. Yeah. I fully understand, but hopefully I'm capable of integrating that into a concept that makes sense. Like the way I've explained faith to you is one of my five virtues. And I always explain it the same because technically you could replace faith by belief in yeah. order to create self confidence. You need to first believe in yourself. If you want to start a new relationship with someone, a meaningful relationship, you need to first believe they are the person they say they are. And if you want to find purpose, you must believe that you were put on the on, on the earth for a specific reason. And I'm hoping that this can help people make more sense because at the end of the day, I don't care that you believe in Buddhism, that you believe in Hinduism, that you're a Muslim, that you're a Christian, doesn't matter. Yeah, I believe what I believe. I believe... In Christianity, this is the choice that I made. But can you imagine if not only people took accountability for themselves, but actually believed in a higher power, believed in others, believed in themselves, how much different this place would be? I'll say. Represent, and like you say, you know, those people that you can truly present questions that if they would just be willing to open their mind and think critically i mean hell most of it's even just logic you know uh, but to be so close-minded just to answer the way that is i'm at a stage of my life I wish i would have been there always but i want i want to be exposed to things that can show me 
mm-hmm. maybe where I'm off. I want to learn. I want to know truth, you know. Yep. And like I say, you know, comments I have regarding religion. Hey, I'm open to the fact of, of being wrong and whatever, you know, whatever is the truth. I always want to be open to hear it, to find it, to, you know, and I think that's something that we just all need to be willing to do, be open-minded, willing to question our beliefs because our beliefs only, they just come from the experience we had mostly when we were younger, how we were exposed to growing up, but also the things that were involved in the people were around. And so most of the time our beliefs are things that we never really thought about to believe. They just evolved through our experience. Unconsciously, so, most of the time, too. It's, it, it's not something we're not taught to be mindful. Yeah. We're not taught to. This is why, to me, meditation is so powerful because all meditation is at the end of the day is you being you in the present moment. Like, I, I love dogs. I'm a big fan of dogs. They're my favorite animal. And the reason being is if you look at a dog, he is in a constant state of meditation. That dog is always in the present. He doesn't care about what happened yesterday. He doesn't even remember yeah. when. He does his mind properly. <laughs> no, because yeah. they say that dogs don't have a concept of time. Wow. When you leave, like like leave for, if you have a dog, leave for five minutes. Lock the door the same way you would if you were going to leave for the day to go to work. But yeah. just leave for 10 minutes, sit in your car come back in the dog will greet you like Mm -hmm. it's been eight hours and it it doesn't make in his head it doesn't matter that it's been five or ten minutes or eight hours they don't comprehend time the way we understand time because time is logical yeah it's not time technically is not real right we made it real by by focusing out of our by dictating our life as per time but it is not real time is just a concept that we invented but can you imagine if you can integrate a bit of the way a dog lives their life? Like there's a, a great meme on Facebook. I, I, I should have downloaded it, but it's basically a guy sitting on the side of a cliff with his dog. And there is a there's a bubble, you know, on top of his head, just showing what they're thinking of. The guy is thinking about everything, he's thinking about his car, his job, <laughs> money, rent, blah, 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 blah. It's filled with bullshit. And then the dog, there's just a picture of what the picture is. All he's seeing is him sitting with his master, enjoying the view. That's it. That's Powerful. all it is. But this is what meditation. This is what meditation is. And yeah. once you start integrating meditation through your daily life, just sitting there doing nothing. It doesn't matter. What, who cares what comes up to mind? Doesn't matter. Yeah. Just breathe and stay still. That's it. That's all you need to do. Just yeah. pay attention to yourself. It, it, it's not, you know, I tried to integrate meditation in my life for so long because everybody's always saying, oh, you need to clear your mind, not concentrate on anything. But by not concentrating on anything, you're concentrating oh, on exactly. not concentrating. <laughs> exactly. So it's, and there's a guy, all he wrote in his book is let it come, let it be, let it go. Oh, yeah. Exactly like you should live life. Perfect. Whatever comes up in your mind, let it exist. Don't fight it. There's no point. Just let it be. Think about it. Let it let it live. And once it's done, there's another something that's going to come up. Just let the first one go and concentrate and just let the, the new one just show up and do whatever it is that it has to do. And then you let that one go. And then you let the other one go. And then can you imagine again, if we lived our life like that, if yeah. Jeez. there's no way people could not see People would stop seeing coincidences. If you were more more mindful of your day-to-day life and realize that, oh shit, why did that happen? Hey, yeah. I, I wonder, what am I supposed to learn from this situation? What why was you know, the other day I was coming back from the gym. There's a guy that we come to a, a four a four-way stop. And I know it. I'm just looking at it. I, I know he's not paying attention. So yeah. I, I'm watching him, but it's my turn to go. He just accelerate at the same time as I go. But I said, go fuck yourself. I'm going. And <laughs> he stops in the middle of the intersections. And I'm just going straight. So I could still see him in my in my back mirror. Yeah. He stayed there beeping and he was screaming. <laughs> and it's interesting because if that would have happened 10 years ago, I would have parked my truck, would have got out. I would have I'm... taken him out, taking him out of his truck and I would have beat the shit out of him. Yep. 
And, <laughs> you know, it was kind and I, I was wondering, I'm like, why did that happen? And I was talking about it with my girlfriend yesterday. And I'm like, huh, this only happened to remind me that I'm not the same guy I was Bingo. 10 years ago. But can you imagine if people started paying attention to this? Like, yeah. you know, this great story. I don't know where I heard that from, but it's it's a man that asks God for patience. God answers him and he's like, I can't give you patience. But what I can do is put you in situation that will force you to become patient. So can you imagine if people started to pay attention to what goes on in their life, what goes on within themselves and just to say, I wonder why I'm reacting like this. Why is that person's comment affecting me that much? Why? Yep. And people would start to realize it's like I tried to explain to a lot of the people that hate on my, because with the amount of views that I get now, I get a lot of fucking haters and I'm at yeah. a point that I'm turning into a stand up comedian. I am trolling the shit. Yeah. <laughs> I enjoy it. Exactly. But one of the things I always tell them, I'm like, bro, you you could have simply scrolled. You, you could have continued mind. scrolling. You don't agree with me? You know, I've never stopped on anybody else's co content that I didn't agree with and left a comment. I've never done it. Yeah. Chances are I'm going to copy it and I'm going to make a video of you making a fun of you, but I will never just stop and start complaining on your, on your content. And, you know, with all the psychology that I studied over the years, you look at the behavior how much hate do you have for yourself that you can no. stop on somebody else's content, start calling them names, calling him a moron, an idiot, calling him a sexist, a message, whatever you want to call me to somebody, you have no idea who they are. Yeah. You have no clue who they're, they're, those people are. Yeah. And if you look at neuro-linguistic programming, they talk about how all the people that you ever liked in your life the reason you like them is because they remind you of you that you they are a reflection of you but the same thing is true on the other way if right. you hate people it's not the other people that you hate it's yourself you're seeing so something true. in them that pisses you off but instead of accepting the fact that you are the problem you right. rather point your finger and say you sir are an asshole yeah very interesting. Very, very fucking interesting. When you look at human behavior. That. Yeah. I, I read a book oh, about five years ago by Byron Katie. I called, you know, it's called the turnaround. It's basically teaching you mm -hmm. that, you know, yep. things that, I mean, it's simple as when you're pointing a finger at someone, you're pointing three at yourself. I mean, that's so true. And as I, you know, the things you were talking about, those are some of the things that I've really been aware of the last couple of years in particular and asking myself, man, why did I react like that? Why am I doing that? And like you say, it comes right back to how you feel about yourself. And so it's just, it's really powerful once you can recognize it and start being aware, you know, because then you can, you know, start to become who you want to become. What's interesting is if you start mixing theology with philosophy and you start putting science into this so if you look this is one i absolutely love so hindus believe that in reincarnation they believe that the spirit is never it doesn't go away it just you come back and you come back and you come back the first law of thermodynamics is that energy is never lost it is simply redistributed that means if that's if that is indeed true that means everything that was ever created is still here. The energy itself is still here. Yeah. So if you look at our theory, our most advanced theory of how the universe was created, it would be the Bing Bang. That means that every single matter that was that exploded that day is still in existence today. Yeah. That means that the Buddhist that says that we're all one because we all come from the same place makes sense scientifically. So if you start looking at it psychologically, that means what I'm looking at you, I'm seeing me, which NLP talks about all the time and psychology talks about all the time. So why is it that I see myself in you is because I am you. Yeah. But that means I'm also God because God, as per the Bible, yeah. made us in his image. So mm -hmm. does that mean I'm also God? 
that I'm because I was part of God, even if I'm a fraction of God, that means I'm God myself. That means I have godly characteristics. Mm -hmm. I can become a God. It's fucking mind blowing. And then you start talking about Buddhism, that anybody can become enlightened. Yeah. So it, it, when you start understanding those things and you, you know, today we, we, we tend to over specialize in everything. We, we see everything in silos. Yeah. It's everybody wants to be specialized in a specific field. And my whole life, I've refused to do that. My whole life, I look at information. I'm one of those guys that have so much useless information that will never come up in a conversation. But that's because I make it a priority to always step back to, to look at, okay, you, you look at the mind, body, spirit. How do you get access to your mind by first mastering your body? By first treating your body, stop treating it like a dumpster, start treating it like a machine, start exercising, start doing martial art. And then you'll see that you're going to start developing discipline. And then, oh shit, you start realizing you're a lot tougher than you thought. And then you start realizing that it's not because you're tired that you're going to quit. And then you realize your mindset is so strong that if your body really wants to quit, guess what? It's going to shut down. So all the time you quit because you're a fucking quitter and your mindset was shit. Not your body. Your body will continue until it shuts down. Right. And then you start to realize, oh, shit, you start asking those questions. Why do I hate that person? Oh, shit, maybe it's because I hate myself. So then you start integrating a bit of spirituality and theology and philosophy in this. And it creates conversation like what we're having right now where there's no fucking answer to anything, just more questions. But you just start realizing that everything's interconnected. Yeah. Man. It's a beautiful thing. It is a beautiful it's, fucking thing when you think it about it. It's just, it's incredible. life is amazing. Life is so simple, yeah. so simple, but yet so amazing at the same time. I we just totally choose agree. to make it complicated because we don't want to admit to ourselves that it all starts with accountability, that we are the problem. The day, you know, uh, you know, Alan Watts. Yeah. Love Alan Watts. And he has. In one of his talks, he talks about being a joker, about how important the role of a joker is. Not only in the fact that if you go back through history, the joker or jester were the only people that were allowed to make fun of the king. They would take, just as today, you look at a George Carlin. That guy yeah. talked politics for 40 <laughs> fucking years That's while making false. jokes. But what he said, he predicted what's going on right now. He saw that shit coming in the 80s. Right. The guy was absolutely brilliant. Yep. But Alan Watts has a talk where he talks about um, the, the role of the jester, uh, the role of, he calls it the joker, but you, yeah. you could argue jester, but not in a way of the king's jester, but in a way of life, in a way of Buddhism. Understand that what we're living right now is not real. It is all just a fucking joke, but accept that it is like that and enjoy it. So yeah. understand that you're going to die. You're going to die. There's no, there, there's yeah. no way. No, the, the biggest disease on this planet is to be born. Accept that. But that also means that if you have faith like I do and you believe in God, that whatever happens after here, this exactly. is an experience. You're meant to learn something. That's why we're yeah. here. Because we'll be back. We'll be back. Yeah, we'll be back. Graduating to that next step, man. It makes yeah. everything. If you're not scared of dying anymore, like that guy that's telling me that God is bullshit and faith is nothing, is is, <laughs> is being gullible. Be scared of shit. I will you. I will put whatever you want. I will I'm not a betting man, but I will bet on that one that he is scared shitless of dying. Of course you are. Of oh, course yeah. you are. Yeah. But if all that matters to me is to do more good than bad because I want to be able to stand in front of God and told them that I did my best. Yeah. If that's all that matters to me, imagine how much good I'm going to bring to this place. Imagine yeah. if everybody had that. And, you know, I, I don't remember who said this, but he was explaining. And let's say that God does not exist, that you're full of shit and we just end up in the dirt. So what? You brought a bunch of goodness to this world. Yeah. No matter what, there's no losing. When yeah, exactly. you're trying to be better for the rest, when you're trying to serve others, you'll I mean, never that lose. That is such a key point right there because you're choosing to focus on the good, the positive, you know, so easy for people to sit in victim stance and just stay there. And, you know, and they wonder why they keep getting what they've gotten in their life. And, you know, you just be willing to look and change that mindset. You can create the life you want, period. 
it's just a choice you know and then you realize that life is very easy life is very simple yes. sorry it's it's not easy that's not the right word it is very simple simple yeah because life ain't easy life is nothing but being easy yeah but it is simple there's no there's no there's really at the end of the day there's no surprise you were born and you're gonna die whatever happens in between is where the beauty is but don't be surprised that one day you're gonna die like this is no. you already agreed to those conditions by being born yeah. you agreed to it wow well, this has been fascinating nico i really appreciate your time i hope we can do this again anytime uh, anytime there's so many things that we could get into is there where can people find you uh people can find me at nicolagan.com that's my, my that's my website by the way i, I want to mention something the i wrote a book at the beginning my first book at the beginning of the year and i had i just got out my i was able to get out my exclusivity contract with amazon so oh. i made my audio book that was recorded by somebody else than me like he has a great voice he sounds awesome so uh -huh. if you If you want my first book, it's for free. Just on my website, oh, you can awesome. go under publications under nicolagan.com and download it for free. And awesome. it's all about purpose. It's all about, it's basically based on the two and a half years I spent in the woods. That's basically what it's That's all I did during those days. Yeah. And so, yeah, you can go there. You can find me on basically every single social media platform out there at real Nicolagan. And you'll see, I, I post every day about, bunch of shit that tends to piss <laughs> off people for some reason well great i'll have all that stuff folks in the show notes so if you're not able to write it down or don't remember it don't worry about it we'll have it under the notes i'll have a link that goes right to that page to download the book as well and again nico really thank you for your time and uh for man all the great words of wisdom that you've dropped today thanks so much for being here thanks for having me man sorry for the monologue Oh, no, it's not, <laughs> not I appreciate it so much. So we'll oh, I just go on rents. I just like <laughs> go on rents. All right. Well, take care. Yeah, man. See you later. If you're tired of supporting the big corporations and, frankly, supporting the swamp through paying for cable or satellite service, it's time to defund the swamp and refund the kingdom. The simplest way to do that is to check out the DC stream box by going to vcstreambox.tv, that is V-S-E-E-S-T-R-E-A-M-B-O-X.tv. Check out this incredible streaming device that gives you every single local channel throughout the country, any sports channel you can imagine. You'll never miss a game, no matter who your team is ever again, as well as 60,000 video on demand titles, all the TV series you can dream of. There's nothing like it, a one-time fee with no monthly subscription. Not only that, if you're you know, looking for an additional income, there's an incredible opportunity with their affiliate program that you can simply scroll to the very bottom of any of the pages on the website, vcstreambox.tv, click on the affiliate program title at the very bottom. It will take you to a page. It'll give you all the information where you can sign up. You'll earn 20% commission paid weekly on any referrals that you send, the unique link that you'll receive via email. Once you have a VC box, you will be blown away and you automatically will get referrals because it is that incredible. I can't even put words to tell people how much people love this thing and how they're blown away by all of the channels that it gives them. It actually includes even 98 Canadian channels and 128 Latino channels.